My name is John Booker and I've had boats on this beach at Worthing for about 55 years. The earliest I can remember fishing was when I was seven, uh, fishing of some sort off the pier or the beach, probably before then. And um, I had a friend later on who had a boat and uh, Splash Point Worthing and we used to go out together fishing. I remember when I first got my boat, which was a very small one, I was still at school and I think it cost £22, which was a lot of money then for a very small boat. And then eventually in 1962 I bought a quarter boat, a lower boat, which was made at New Haven on Denton Island. A wooden boat, um, 16 feet long, and used to fish with that and go uh, snorkelling and diving, angling and sometimes a bit of net fishing. But I was really mad on the diving and the angling. I remember back in the 60s when um, quite often there were anything up to 11 boats anchored off, ready to go fishing the next day. Um, but um, eventually um, there were more, there was more vandalism with boats set adrift and then power winches came in and it was easier to winch the boats up, so they were winched up rather than left out at sea. Some of the worst weather conditions are probably um, fog and huge waves, and um, especially if it's dark, that is probably the worst conditions you can be in, but um, obviously uh, wind is bad as well. And um, one day I was coming ashore luckily, and I've never seen anything like it. The wind got that strong that the sea just turned into spray. And I've always thought that if the nets were in the front of the boat, I could haul them to the back to get the weight back in the boat. Well, luckily the nets were in the front of the boat, but they didn't, they were very light. And the, the wind blew for about 10 minutes and my waders, the water got in in my waterproofs and down into my waders because I didn't have time to protect myself properly. And when I got back, a friend said he was watching television and there was some local event on and all the umbrellas took off and a friend of mine thought that the tree in front of the house was going to blow down. So it must have been, it was horrendous. But it, the, luckily the sea wasn't rough because it was off the land and I was only about a mile out to sea, a mile and a half. Well, the pear trawlers, they must have started, I think, in, in, uh, in the uh, 70s. And before that, you very rarely saw a trawler, maybe one or two small ones. And then suddenly there's all these pear trawlers coming through, almost fleets of them, one after the other. And um, they do a lot of damage to the seabed. Recently, I was out there and I had the camera, but unfortunately, I'd run out of space on the camera, so I missed it. But they came right past me, and it would have been a, made a good picture. And I've never been near them before without the engine running. And because as they went past me, you could hear all this noise coming through the, the hull of the boat from where they're, they're dragging along the seabed, and I couldn't believe it. You know, the, the damage they're doing is horrendous. And I don't know what's happening now because as far as I know, they're only allowed 1% one, 1 bycatch of bass. So they must be throwing lots of bass away, dead. The fishing apparently was exceptionally good after the war because nobody had been fishing. And um, I can remember going out with Arthur Dumford with, with a, a hay fork. Um, and and uh, we went out about halfway up the pier and um, he's stabbing his place and in a few minutes they're flapping all over the bottom of the boat. 